From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you into this Wednesday, Wacky Wednesday, October the 25th, 2017. And you're probably asking yourself, why is it Wacky Wednesday? It's hump day. So we got to have some stories somewhere in the show that's a little wacky. and We'll try to do that. Uh, oh, I, I have a story, but uh, I'm not going to tease. It. Okay. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, uh, we have a story for him, and uh, he's got a new deal out, and uh, what that deal is, we'll discuss that a little bit. Uh, there is a buildup in the Pacific, in case you haven't heard, three aircraft carrier strike groups in the Western Pacific ahead of the uh, Trump visit. Now, I don't know if you're going to make anything out of this at this point, but General Jack Keane, uh, he is a military analyst and very, very uh, skilled in these particular things. So let's uh, present that question uh, to Keane and see what he says about that. Let's see. Jack Keane? Well, first of all, two carry groups is unusual. Three is very, very unusual. Uh, and it certainly is, e even with a presidential visit, we don't normally do something like that. But we, I think it doesn't mean that we're going to go to war. It, what it does mean is it's part, I think, in my judgment, just thinking about it, is it's part of the overall strategy dealing with North Korea. The, the president's strategy with, with his national security team is to isolate North Korea and apply maximum pressure. And to do that, they said, we're putting the military option back on the table, and then their main effort is to is to use diplomacy to mm -hmm. cut off all trade with North Korea with countries, 20 plus countries, and that's happening. To use China as a lever against North Korea, and that is happening. And also to keep convincing them that the military option is not rhetoric as it was during the Obama administration, that it is absolutely a real, serious option that the United States will pursue. Look, if you go on the assessment of Japan's defense minister yesterday, asserted that North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities have grown to an unprecedented, critical, and imminent, and listen to those words as he's used those, and he says, has grown to a unprecedented, critical, and imminent level requiring different responses. I think this is our response. I think this is a response that is long time coming. Now, either two or things, two, two, two or three things are going to happen here. The, one of them, I believe, um, the North is going to say to themselves, holy crap, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're really serious. Uh, Trump is not a bunch of hot air. Um, yeah, one carrier is interesting. Two, holy crap, something's getting ready to go down. But three aircraft carrier strike groups in the Western Pacific, most um, other pundits on the television saying this is a strong message of, um, you know, either give up your, your nukes and let's come to the table and let's talk or... Our military options with our allies are on the table. We're ready to go. We got our strike groups. These aircraft carriers, man, are they're locked and loaded. They're ready to go. We got our B-52 bombers. They're ready to go. I mean, we got so much firepower, folks. It's not even funny. We could pulverize, pulverize it, it, the ludicrous uh threats and that he's gonna uh the united states is gonna be blown to smithereens and there's gonna, not gonna be an ash left in america blah 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 uh he could possibly get a few shots off 
and maybe hit California, maybe Alaska, who knows, but uh, to pulverize the entire country, it's a big country. It would take a lot more than what they have, that's for sure. It would take American might. Uh, it would take everything that our allies have and then some. Uh, the guy is blowing it out of his hatch here uh, because he doesn't defecate. He's the uh, supreme leader over there, and he's got a lot of people smoke screened and dehydrated. So, you know, maybe they're they're believing it here. But I, I have sensed um, the war drums beating pretty loudly the last uh, several weeks. And I've told you all along there's going to be an escalation here. Jack Keane saying, oh, you know, I don't totally read into this. What what can't you read into this? Uh, it looks um, like there's something that's going to get ready to go down, in my opinion. And because night and day, Kim Jong-un and his cronies and scientists are working with uh, Iran because they get a lot of their scientific uh, advice from the Iranians through back channel and through the Internet. They get advice, information, and they share it with the Iranians and who else, maybe even with the Russians, as to what they're doing, next steps, and uh, getting ready for another launch. And I, the guy's crazy enough, uh, seriously crazy enough, and this is what I predict, because the president's getting ready to go over. Uh, he's on his way over, so ahead of this uh, visit, which he will go over. Whether he visits the DNC, we don't know. I think politically it would be a great move. We don't know. But I believe for the president's visit, I believe that he's going to do a flyover. In other words, I think he's going to launch a ballistic missile towards Japan, towards Guam, uh, as a a gesture uh, extended of power, basically saying, I can still do this and I don't care how many strike groups are out there. I don't care what military options you have on the table. You're not going to mess with us. Look for a launch anytime now. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't just keep this, this option on the table until the president actually arrives and uh, not only launches one of them, but several of them. I don't put it past him. I, I really do. You've heard it here first. I, I, I believe, you know, if I had, to, it, it seems like he's just so predictable. But I believe that he's going to, he's going to share a little uh, flyover surprise and get everybody uh, upset as the president arrives. And once word reaches Penyang, they're going to launch. I don't think that they're going to hit anything. I just think that they're going to do a launch just to kind of spook everybody again. And, and the poor people in Japan, they're going to be running down into the subways again. All the alarms are going to be going off. My poor brother will be one of them having to run down there with the students there in Nagoya and uh, and hide, which is a very, very sad thing. But this this is uh, this is uh, this is on, folks. This is going to be happening very, very soon. Uh, Japan, I think, is very, very smart. I think they got their ducks in a row, and we certainly have Japan's back, but they're ready for this, and they've been planning uh, military drills and with the United States, and also I think a great thing they're doing with their citizens is making sure that they are prepared. Unlike, I'm not a big fan of uh, Guam's uh, mayor and the governance there where it's just kind of nonchalant about the whole thing. I think that they should be more prepared because... I don't put anything past Un that Hawaii, they've been preparing much more than Guam has, and that's a good thing, readying themselves and so so many other U.S. cities ready because this guy can go intercontinental. This guy's been above the International Space Station. The guy can launch things into outer space. If you can get to space, you got navigation, and you can let the Earth spin a little bit and blast back down again, reentry. And uh, implode something over what we talked about, the EMP, which is a huge threat. And that would be like the huge, this would be big league, okay, if you will, for any rogue nation to launch one of those bad boys above the United States because it would be lights out. Get the book uh, from Ted Koppel. He wrote about it. He wrote about it. I know a lot of other people wrote about it. But I've been hearing this stuff for years, so make sure you're ready for 
eventualities because this day and age, folks, just when you think you've, you know, you've experienced it all, you've heard it all, you got to admit, we live in some very, very vicarious times. And with that said, you got to be extra, extra careful, extra prepared and ready uh, for anything just about these days. And, you know, financial security, that's one thing. Um, you know, you could have cash in the bank. That's terrific. But if all hell hits the fan, you think you're going to be able to go to the ATM, get your, get your money out. What do you think is going to be sexier gold coins or paper bills? Um, I do like the Rosalind capital option with, with gold. Yeah. That clings a little bit better. looks a little sexier in the hand. Yeah. My advice is to make sure you always have some gold on hand. Uh, have some cash on hand, have it in a safe somewhere in your house because you just don't know. You got no ability to be able to go to the bank and get money out. You're going to have to have something to be able to get something. Nothing like uh, good old cash and coins. Have a mix of both. Uh, silver, uh, silver coins are good. Silver's up, by the way, so get some silver. People ask me all the time some financial advice. They write to me. Silver. Definitely gold for sure. Um, Rosalind Capital, uh, I'm not a big fan of them. I don't either way, uh, but you should diversify. You should have some hard currency on you for times like this, in my opinion. Uh, Diversification is a good thing, and you may want to talk to your financial advisor about it. It's probably a good thing to do. All right, moving on. Colin Kaepernick, the former big NFL quarterback who got canned because of his is kneeling and uh, it's caught contagiously. When I talked earlier, first hour about the contagiousness of lunacy, liberal lunacy. Well, he, he's uh, been spending money and he's been broke and uh, well, somebody came to his rescue. Dear old random house decided to uh, go ahead and grant Colin Kaepernick a book deal. That's right. Well, you know, 2016 gained the nationwide attention when he went ahead and uh, took a knee during football games and protest the treatment of minorities. That in itself, and I've said it all along, protesting about minorities is great, but you don't do it to the national anthem. He was with the San Francisco 49ers. But because a free agent after the season, he was not he's not been signed by another NFL team since. So here's a book deal. And I wonder what's going to be in the book. It'll probably be why he took a knee. Hopefully he explains himself a little bit more in detail. I think he's looking for another deal. And I'm just curious, I wonder how much money that Colin Kaepernick is going to give out of the royalties from his book to the inner city, to minorities. How much money is he going to write the check to? I, I'm just curious. I can't wait to find out. Um, I can't wait for his first interview on television to tell us that all proceeds are going to go towards helping minorities. I, I, I want to hear how much money is going to go towards it. Very curious. It's kind of like how much money did uh, the Clinton uh, fund, uh, yeah, exactly, fund themselves. Colin Kaepernick cares about Colin Kaepernick. Uh, He realizes that this book deal is probably the only deal he's going to get because he's probably never going to play football ever again. I don't think he's ever going to be employed by the NFL and this book I just have a feeling he's going to write himself off forever because what it's going to do is going to become so much more controversial Um, but he's begging the NFL at the same time please hire me back please I, I will stand for all games but now if anybody was considering him as to play on their team What's in the book? What's he going to write about? What's he going to say? So now we got to wait for the book to be 